So, somebody recommended you use Create React app. Knowledge required is JS, HTML, CSS and of course React. You jump into it and invoke the command. As you get deeper into developing your app, you realize you are learning about many more things. TypeScript, SAS, ESLint, Prettier, Babel, Webpack and it goes on. This tool stack is indicative of most of large web applications on the internet now. But the landscape is shifting under us and I want to talk about it. Hi everybody, my name is Pavitra Kormar alias PK and I'm here to tell you about the next generation of front-end tooling. Let's get started. On the front-end, we use a multiverse of tools that build on top of each other. These were uh, possible due to the introduction of Node.js and NPM. And all of these make up for the fact that JavaScript lacks a compile time, it lacks static typing, and for a long time did not have module system. Usual suspects are static typing using TypeScript that needs a transformation step to become JavaScript. We also use Babel to make sure that the new features of JavaScript work in older browsers. We get CSS to import into JavaScript using CSS modules and be compatible with browse all browsers uh, using post CSS. We also use Jest, Mocha or Eva for testing. And finally, we use Webpack, Rollup or Parcel, which are bundlers to stitch all of these together and create an optimized bundle ready for production. While these tools are state of the art right now, developers still face problems using them every day. I'm mostly going to be talking about problems with transpilation and bundling here. Hot module reloading, the technique that we use to swap code in a running local environment as soon as it changes, doesn't work well all the time. Source maps are difficult and slow to generate. This creates friction while debugging issues in your code base. Developers need to maintain tons of configuration related to each of these new tools. Customizing these tools for your own use case involves learning about different and quirky plugin systems. And did I mention how slow all this is? As your code base size increases, the bundler needs to do a lot more work to set your web app up and the startup time for your local dev environment and the dev loop itself becomes slower. Webpack 5 tries to fix this with caching and parcel is going in the direction of using worker threads. But in my opinion, anything slower than instant reload is too slow. So if you have to wait like half a minute or a whole minute before every time you spin up the dev server, I'm going to be really reluctant to even think about working on that project, right? And um, this kind of helps me with debugging too, because now like every time someone reports a new thing, I, I clone the reproduction. It almost always starts instantly. I don't have to like wait. So what are we doing about these problems? A recent catalyst that has accelerated potential solutions has been ECMAScript modules. As I mentioned before, JavaScript was not conceived with a module system in mind. We frontenders have been co-opting the module system developed by Node.js in 2009 called CommonJS. Most of the bundlers assume that the code that they receive as input will be CommonJS. The introduction of ESM in the ES6 version of JavaScript has propelled a lot of new ideas into existence. Another convenient trend that has been gripping the JS world is the idea of writing tooling in languages other than Node.js. The most significant effort in this direction has been a new bundler called ESBuild, which is written in Go. The fact that it's written in Go means that it is eons faster than anything we could write in Node.js. The, this page on ESBuild's uh, documentation website uh, uh, outlining the reasons why it's so fast are well worth anyone's reading time. Slowly, we've been embracing the idea that we can load JavaScript as ESM 
for development purposes only. This cannot scale to production as we can't expect all of our users to load hundreds of modules on every page reload. But on development, this idea can really help developers overcome the problems that I mentioned earlier. Web Dev Server was one of the first tools to embrace the concept of ESM in development. Then came Snowpack, which combined ESM along with ESBuild. The latest in these tools has been uh, Wheat.js, which combines ESM, ESBuild, and ton of new ideas into itself. With Ivan U, Ivan U the creator of Vue.js, has also created Wheat.js and is now building a community of developers around it. Wheat also believes in being more opinionated. It tries to bake into itself the ideas from the past decade on how to build web applications. Uh, this makes it a little higher level tool than Webpack. In Wheat.js, only the file that got edited will be transpiled and served in a developer environment. This leads to better HMR, this leads to better hot module reloading, better uh, source maps, and uh, a really fast dev loop, uh, which is a pleasant dev experience. As we have so far established, Wheat.js is quite awesome. Uh, but I'd like to give you a much more practical idea of what to expect and uh, what kind of problems would Wheat.js solve for you. Uh, so here are my uh, favorite Wheat.js features. Instant server start and file load. So this is a, this is the signature feature of Wheat. What Wheat aims to be is super fast. And uh, it can be super fast because uh, it uses ESM and loads only one file at a time. And so when you edit that file, it's only that file that's getting transpiled and built um, uh, and uh, served to the user. Uh, the rest of the files are uh, cached heavily and uh, are only changed when the hash changes. Here I have built a small to-do list um, in plain HTML, CSS and JavaScript uh, and have used Wheat for this. So Wheat gives me three uh, scripts by default. Uh, so when you say Wheat, uh, start, uh, it starts up the dev server Wheat build builds the production build and Wheat preview allows you to preview your production build. So in this to-do list, I have an index HTML and I have a script type module where I import from uh, the index.js file. When DOM content is loaded, I call the main function. So in the main function, I uh, grab all the uh, elements that I need and um, handle events and render the to-do list when new to-dos are added. So uh, this is this on the right hand side is a Wheat uh, uh, browser plugin for uh, VS Code. It's pretty new and uh, but uh, it seems to get the job done for small applications. So Here's the to-do list working and um, here you can see that um, so I can change some HTML that gets loaded instantly. Um, Here I can add some JavaScript. That gets loaded instantly. Like and uh, changing uh, styles will hot module reload. Hot module reload all the CSS. It's pretty cool. And I 
font size is nine. Yeah, so basically, wheat aims to be super fast, and if it isn't, uh, then uh, that's something that you would expect wheat to fix. The next thing that I really like uh, about Wheat right now is that it has a good hot module reloading support for Vue and React out of the box uh, as plugins that are already built. Uh, so this makes uh, using Wheat for uh, these two frameworks uh, very palatable and, uh, and a great experience. So in the documentation, you can see that Wheat is compatible with uh, a ton of uh, template presets uh, that it provides out of the box. So if you want to use React plus TypeScript and uh, all the features that you expect with that and all the production bundling that you would expect with that, you could use this template and pretend it was a Create React app but with a much faster build. So I really like it that uh, Wheat has completely adopted the uh, conventional TS and TypeScript and JSX support that ESBuild provides. Uh, that is ESBuild builds any file that has an extension with TS uh, as a TypeScript file and an extension with JSX as a, JSX, uh, as a file containing JSX. Uh, if a file had an extension of only JS, it wouldn't do any of these. Uh, um, transformations uh, so in webpack you would have to regardless of uh, where you start from regardless of the extension uh, in webpack you would have had to configure the loaders for the for these um, features and uh, without any kind of out of the box support so that's where uh, something like wheat becomes a higher level tool uh, where uh, it decides that uh, it'll make this decision based on convention and not uh, uh, require explicit uh, plugins or loaders for this purpose. Of course, you you can do additional support through Wheat plugins, uh, but for most purposes, uh, this will be provided to you out of the box. So those were like the top three. Um, features that Wheat also kind of boasts of. From here onwards, we'll see the features that I personally uh, got excited about because these features kind of uh, show the thinking behind uh, building Wheat and uh, the direction in which it uh, forms its opinions is pretty exciting to me. Uh, so pre-bundling. So pre-bundling is a feature that Wheat provides. So say you had a package like Lodash ES. So and uh, I imported say one function Lodash ES. Updated. So wheat here gives us a convenient uh, kind of uh, optimization. Maybe you could call it an optimization. So it doesn't. Um, so the one of the drawbacks of ESM is that if you were to import a lot of files at once for an app, uh, then the number of network uh, requests needed to get all of them would block your browser so wheat kind of knows about this and has decided for you that you wouldn't care much about what comes from node modules and if the node modules library had a ton of files it will pre-bundle all of them into a single file as if it were production or as if it were webpack so the point is not to use ESM all the time strictly uh, in development. The point is to leverage ESM in such a way that uh, it makes development fast and convenient. So in this case, ESM is inconvenient. So Wheat tends to pre-bundle them into one file. Next is uh, the way in which Wheat supports multiple entry points. 
My next favorite feature of Wheat is how Wheat has already thought about multiple entry points in an application. So many applications, for example, the, uh, the ones made by Next.js and Next.js uh, tend to have uh, different pages as different entry points. And uh, this is hard to configure in a uh, bundler like Webpack. Uh, so Wheat has uh, already thought of it and uh, uh, provided a con convenient configuration to point to any HTML at any nested level depth and correspond that to the uh, URL like a route. So to look for documentation on this, if you go to building for production and the multi-page app, uh, then you'll see that uh, if there is an index HTML here and a nested index HTML here, uh, what you would have to do is configure them as uh, roll-up options and they'd be available in these uh, at these links. Another way in which Wheat is a more complete bundler is that it provides a library mode. So this is something that uh, Snowpack doesn't support. So library mode is where you can use Wheat as a bundler for libraries as well. Uh, it's no surprise because it's backed by uh, Rollup and uh, uh, Rollup is very uh, well known for uh, library support and uh, Wheat also uh, provides that easily. So here I have a copy of the webpack library example so in webpack library example uh, that it's a repo that i own um, i had uh, configured uh, a starter template for uh, webpack uh, if you were going to build a javascript library in this case um, it has simple functions like convert to num and uh, convert to word so it converts numbers to words and words to numbers and um, uh, the test is um, in this html to translate the results uh, here so what i've done is i followed beats uh, documentation and uh, added the build lib path here and uh, when I ran yarn read build browser, which is a packet script that I made, uh, read creates uh, both ES and UMD files uh, in the dist folder. So now in my uh, example HTML, I have. Uh, imported from the es file and used it here so what we expect this to translate to is the number one so um, if i use vs codes live then um, yeah we can see that uh, this is uh, working uh, so yeah we uh, does a great so yeah, Wheat does a great job uh, in um, uh, building libraries as well. So the next feature that uh, I really liked in Wheat was the way it handled static assets and in my case specifically images. So in my latest project uh, is a Sokoban game where uh, I wrote uh, most of the code with Preact and uh, did not use any bundler and just served the ESM files. I later added Wheat to it and uh, it, that that was super easy so uh, all i did was install uh, wheat as a dev dependency uh, and um, uh, use the scripts so here i have the wheat local dev server running and that's how you are able to see this on localhost 3000 so point about static asset handling in wheat is the way it handles images uh, so an image that I uh, included in CSS as a background mm, here uh, gets included as an image but uh, some images get included as uh, inline and uh, some more in the HTML 
so all of this magic goes on in the background and you have a well optimized um, static asset handling system for you uh, when you use wheat so these dynamic imports polyfill is a curious little feature uh, that uh, wheat provides and it also speaks about the thoughtfulness of the bundler that uh, dynamic imports are relatively new uh, they they came to uh, javascript after esm and uh, even in uh, latest browsers they are not supported completely so wheat just takes on the responsibility of polyfilling that for you which i thought was a good gesture universal plugin support uh, this is the final thing that uh, kind of excites me. So as I told you earlier, um, writing plugins is kind of the hardest part of using a bundler like Webpack or Rollup. Uh, each of them has a different way of um, uh, hooking into the compiler and a different way of manipulating AST and so on. Uh, but uh, what Weed does is it wants to go with the uh, with the existing rollup plugins and this got adopted by wmr another bundler developed by uh, jason uh, these all uh, kind of uh, want to have a universal plugin standard uh, this way the plugins are shareable between them but uh, we can have extra stuff over rollup since it is a higher level tool uh, but the current um, claim is that all of rollups plugin will work in wheat also uh, which is a great uh, new direction um, yeah we can we'll see where it takes us for the last year or so uh, many are claiming that uh, we are entering the third age of javascript this is characterized by this move to esm for development uh, by the development of uh, things like tailwind css uh, by uh, the usage of different languages other than Node.js for uh, front-end tooling, uh, by the maturing of uh, things like Dino.js. Um, and uh, if you've seen, we also have uh, the development of a new bundler standardization uh, that, could be, that could help us uh, push better JavaScript to production. Uh, so all of these together will form the next generation of front-end tooling. Thanks everybody for uh, listening to my talk. My name is Pavitra Kodmar and I hope you enjoyed that.